So what you have really is the inability uh, or unwillingness of policymakers to really, uh, um, first of all, acknowledge that there is a problem, that multiculturalism has essentially failed. And second of all, there's an unwillingness to do something about it. Um, there's a lot of concern here in Europe because of low birth rates, um, that Europe needs to be bringing in more migrants to keep the social welfare systems alive. It's a question of demographics. Um, then there's the other multicultural aspect of it, which really was after the end of the Second World War, uh, there was a general feeling that nationalism is the cause of wars. And if you can kind of dilute what it means to be German and dilute what it means to be French, um, that would sort of um, reduce the chances for war in the future. So really have these failed policies and these failed premises uh, that have been going on for at least 50 years. And policymakers in here in Europe are still unwilling to acknowledge um, uh, the, the problem at hand, the issue at hand, which is um, the inability to assimilate or integrate uh, millions and millions of people. Uh, so um, what we saw in France is um, just the beginning, I think, of a great civil unrest here in Europe. Um, there's really nothing that can be done, to my mind, at the moment, because um, these people are European citizens. They were born here. They can't be deported. Um, and even if they were um, deportable, uh, European Union home human rights laws makes it almost impossible. So you have millions and millions of immigrants who are coming to Europe over the past decade or so illegally, and they're committing crimes because they can't um, provide for themselves in normal jobs. So they go into drug dealing and they go into her snatching and all sorts of um, petty crimes. And these people are arrested and let go and arrested and let go because um, European human rights laws makes it almost impossible uh, to, um, to deport these people. So you have really a long-term problem that um, President, French President Macron and others um, are just unwilling to acknowledge. You know, before we continue, Soren, if you can kind of give me a picture, you've given us a ton of information here. I'd love it if our audience could understand where you're coming from, you know, what your work has been and why you're tracking this so closely. Sure. I've been tracking this for about the last 15 or 20 years. Um, I myself am a first generation American. My parents moved to the United States from Germany after the Second World War. Uh, I I'm now in Spain. Um, I live most of my adult life actually here in Europe, in Germany, in France, and in Spain. Um, so I'm very pro-migration. I, um, I, I think um, migration is a great thing if it's done properly, if it's done legally, and if it's done in an orderly way. So over the last 15 or 20 years, I've really been interested in the migration issue, but also the Islam aspect of it. Uh, a lot of the migrants that come to the United States from Latin America, by, by and large, are um, Roman Catholic, or they come from a certain Judeo-Christian background. What you have here in Europe is um, millions of people coming from countries that are completely opposed to, to Judeo-Christian worldview, um, the liberties and the dem democratic freedoms uh, that we um, love and we cherish. And uh, many of these are coming from an Islamist background where you have the Sharia law. It's a topic that is not going away. And it's a topic that policymakers really need to understand. And I think European citizens, or ordinary, ordinary citizens need to understand it as well. Um, because if you can't identify really accurately what the problem is, then there's not going to be uh, uh, any hope for political solutions. Well, you, you just made me think about this. I've heard reports that in certain of the suburbs of, for example, Paris, but this would be a broader phenomenon, there's whole areas where, you know, sort of the governance basically of the area has changed and even, you know, police are reticent to actually wander into these areas in some cases because it's basically like a different legal system. Uh, if you could kind of break that down, and is, is this true and, and how does it work if so? Sure, you're finding this in um, a lot of the large French cities, um, also in Berlin to some extent, the larger German cities. Um, to some extent in Madrid, in the capital, on the outskirts of the capital, where you have very, very large numbers of immigrants, where the native Europeans are now in the minority. A lot of people have moved out. And um, uh, what happens is essentially that the norms of the countries of the migrants are the law of the land. So in some cases, um, particularly in Germany and in France, you have Islamists that take um, advantage of the uh, despair uh, of the youth, and they offer them a brighter future through the future of Islam. 
Um, so there's a radicalization that takes place. And these people then obviously try to enforce um, the Islamic law and the Sharia laws in their neighborhoods and their barrios. Um, and what you have is um, a reluctance of police and um, fire departments, ambulances, any sort of um, uh, representative of the state. There's a reluctance of these people to go into these areas because of the danger that it presents. And so what set off these riots was the shooting of a 17-year-old Moroccan-Algerian um, who was um, at a police stop and he refused to stop. And so the police shot him. Um, the problem is that the police, um, when they're working in these areas, their number one uh, perspective is self-survival. And so they're assuming that everybody um, in these neighborhoods is a criminal. And the migrants, they see these attitudes of the police and they see that as uh, xenophobic and as discriminatory. And it just creates a more hatred towards the state. So you, what you have really is a cycle um, of self-preservation on the part of the police and on increasing hatred on the part of the youth. And that makes it, um, these, these, these suburbs in your large European cities essentially lawless zones where either you have some form of Islamic law taking over or you have the law of the jungle. It's a real challenge uh, for policymakers. Um, there's so much pressure by the media and by you know, the political systems um, uh, to be lenient on um, criminals and on, on wrongdoing for the sake of um, um, not being Islamophobic or not being um, anti-immigrant. And so there needs to be an equilibrium to my mind in which the police in all these European countries are authorized by the political authorities to do their job and enforce the law. Uh, and of course, if police um, are found do of wrongdoing or brutality, they also need to be um, you know, brought to justice. And this is a really big problem in France uh, because there's a reluctance on the part of um, political authorities to um, hold police accountable. Uh, oftentimes it's very hard to find proof or evidence um, of the motives of the police officer at the time of the, you know, the incidents. So you have really sort of a breakdown in communications on many different levels. And that's really allowing um, um, it's, it's making French law or German law or Spanish law unenforceable in many parts of these uh, large European cities, especially on the outskirts. Well, you know, one of the causes that's being cited is racism, that this is, a, this is all a product of racism. And from what you've been telling me here, it seems like that's a more complicated question than is immediately obvious. Yeah, it is. Um, I've lived here and I see a lot of racism in um, all these European countries. Um, it's particularly bad against um, Arabs and Sub-Saharan Africans, people who look different. I mean, you can't deny it, it's there. Um, on the other hand, um, you have kids who don't want to integrate or assimilate. Um, they don't want to get a job uh, and they blame everybody else for their problems. So it's like a perpetual victimhood. Um, it's very hard to tell exactly what the numbers are, but in my mind, roughly 70% of the migrants in France are assimilated and they're integrated and they're working, hardworking, they're um, contributing French society, they're law abiding. It's about, to my mind, around 30% of um, particularly male youths who are finding it very hard to get out of the cycle um, of these living in these, uh, these suburbs. I should mention that these suburbs oftentimes are on the outskirts of the city, beyond the highways. So it's very difficult to cross those borders, those, those um, natural borders, to get from the suburbs into the city center. So many spend their whole lives sort of in a, um, in a part of France that is really completely different from you know, the rest of France. So this is really a tragedy, and this has basically been going on for many, many decades. Many people have written books about this already in the 1990s and the early 2000s. 